guys and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today what I'm going to be actually covering is cave plants very similar to the hanging roots and stuff like that in 1.17. Uh, we I was able to do this um, with some structures and uh, a block I believe so we were able to do that. Uh, the only downside to this is it actually is really hard to get them to generate due to uh, how caves and stuff are set up it's it's difficult to get them to spawn on the surface of things so it will take a little bit of um quite a bit of structures to actually generate this much i believe it was about i don't know it was it was a lot of structures in order to do that i don't know exact amount we'll count them later on but uh, i added particles to them so they can drop and they're they generate this is actually a pretty dense area when it comes to where the actually have been generating so we'll go into spectator and I'll show you what it actually looks like in other caves and stuff like that so now you have to keep in consideration that it's uh, quite a bit of structures generating to get this amount of actual plants to generate but if you were to do the same thing with a lot more other structures and stuff like that for different plants it would obviously make your caves a lot more lush so it's not just restricted to um per se the this one plan obviously the more structures you add using this method uh the more plants that you're actually going to get into your caves and stuff like that so uh another thing that you can actually do is specify specify what biomes and stuff uh that they should generate in and um obviously you can make per biome or even per dimension per biome um, generation for these plants and stuff too so it's pretty dynamic on what you can do with it it's just um, they don't generate too much even with the amount of structures that I have put in so it's just one thing to know all right so I think that basically is a good way to kind of show just kind of flying around here as you can see there's a few of them in the smaller caves there's not a lot uh, when you get to more open areas like this they actually do generate a lot more and I've noticed that a little bit but um, it's just due to how the plants actually are generating and I was I took quite a bit of time trying to just get them generating at all and I was able to get a little bit but even with the structure uh, basically maxed out on the groups and everything like that I, I was still only getting roughly around one plant per uh, generation so it wasn't really working too well but uh, it's better than nothing all right so let's go into M crater and there's a nice little cluster over here um, yeah so let's go into M crater and I'll show you how the block is set up and then I will show you the structures and then the particles as well All right, so there is only about five main components to build up this particular project, and a lot of them are the structures themselves. So we have about 30 structures here in order to generate that amount of plants. Now, like I said, it takes quite a bit to um, generate quite a few little amount of plants, and that's just due to the difficulty of generating things underground, really. So we'll cover the structure one when we actually get into it. All these other ones are exactly just duplicates of the number one just been renamed. So if we cover, say, number one, then we will be able to cover all of them at the same time. Uh, we also have a generation condition. Now, this is basically where you can con uh, make a condition to... Um, decide where your plants will actually spawn. I basically just allowed them to generate anywhere. You can also specify biomes, dimensions, dimensions and biomes, or pretty much anything that you really want. And we'll cover that in just a little bit. But um, the other thing that we are doing is we're doing a random tick for the particles. And then there's the particles and the block itself. So let's go into the block and we'll cover the settings first. So the first thing that I'm doing is I am using a cross model. Now you can use any particular model that you want, but this is what I'm using for this particular 
project and then I've basically specified the bottom texture for the cross model and given it a item texture of the same texture for the plant that will just kind of make it more like a plant texture uh, rather than a 3d texture it's also trans translucent and I have set the block to have translu translucent parts uh, this should help with some uh, lighting issues and the block size is just the default I left that the same I'm sure you could optimize that if you wanted to uh, some other things that I've changed was to make sure that the material is plants the block sound is plant and it's under the decorations tab uh, now generally plants have a hardness and resistance of zero I don't know why I've set okay so apparently I don't know if this is a new thing but um, it looks like zero isn't possible for blocks so it looks like the minimum value that a block can have is 0 0.1 for hardness and resistance so uh, it's best to set that to that level and uh, you can walk through the block obviously that would be important for making a plant as well uh, I have set the axe as the default item and the dropping properties as are as seen here and the advanced properties I have basically gone and left the default uh, tick rate and everything like that to its normal I have also set the block color on map to foliage just because it should be foliage because it's plant now you can actually set the flammability for the block if you want it to actually catch fire um, I believe I'm not entirely sure let's see what here it says uh, planks are about 20 I'm sure you can figure out the fire resistance of plants I'll quickly check that one sec on wiki okay so it says here that flowers and grass as well so down here it says uh, the flammability is 60 so if you're going to be creating a plant generally the uh, the flammability for that is 60 on Java and 30 for plants on bedrock however it doesn't say what bedrock is for the flammability so I'm assuming it's probably 60 um, outside of that that's basically what that the flammability is for so if you want to set the flammability for this particular plant then you would set it to 60 and that will cover probably most plants and grass materials uh, I left it at zero for for default. Now for the other properties, uh, for reaction to being pushed, you want to set this to destroy. This is how most plants are set up uh, in general if they are pushed by um, any piston and the AI and the random offset I've left alone. Uh, you could also do random offset for X and Z and this should allow you to um, offset the center location where the model is located for the X and Z however I wouldn't suggest using the X Y and Z as this could alterate the height of the plant and it won't look that good for hanging plants or plants that are on the floor as well uh, however the X and Z should work fine and most plants are actually actually use X and Z for the actual offset for example flowers and grass use it all right, so the other thing that we have is we haven't used the tick rate or the MBT. We don't need that. We don't use. We didn't use energy or fluid storage uh, triggers. We have the client display random tick. Now this is for the particles. Uh, we'll cover the particles in just a second. And generation, I have left it as default, so it doesn't generate naturally. <laughs> Alright, so now that we got that all sorted out, let's go into the particles quickly. And I just want to cover the settings for the particles. So the particle texture I've just set up here. I have set the uh, particle rendering type to opaque. I think this is the default by naturally. And I believe all most of these other settings are pretty much the same. And the only thing that I have changed is the particle uh, minimum age. I know I've changed this, which is between 60 ticks and 120 ticks. So it'll randomly despawn between those amount of ticks. 
and I have does particle collide and I've set this to true this kind of makes it um, collide with other hitboxes like blocks and stuff like that so I've enabled that uh, now when we're actually generating the particles if we go back to our block go to triggers and then we go on to client display now this particles are displayed on client side so this is basically where you would have to set your particle condition now because it's a random tick this is would be a tick update so it will generate um, based on a tick update and this is basically what I've done to generate the particles themselves so I'm running it on the client side now normally you would have a not statement if you want it to run on server side but because it's on client side I'm only telling it to run on the client side itself after which I am testing for the block below to be error so if the block the material block below of this current block uh, it will if it's error then what we're going to do is we're going to run this uh, condition or the uh, script inside here now I do have a local variable here it's called random location this basically randomizes the location where the particles will actually spawn from now the X and Z location for these are offset a little bit depending on the rotation it's kind of like a dice with the uh, five dots so that's basically how I've laid out the particles for generating and it will kind of alternate between which one it is based on a random number so I've also set the random number for after we set the random local variable to a random number I'm testing for the random number itself so the first one that we're testing for is if the random number is equal to or less than the a full one and greater than or equal to 0 0.8 and then we're testing if 0 point if it's less than 0 0.8 and equal to or greater than 0 0.6 and then we do that all the way until we reach our zero percent of the chance that it could spawn this divides it into a uh, five uh, basically an even amount of percent that it will alternate between these different numbers randomly the other thing that we're doing here is we're just offsetting the coordinates for the block so it basically or the particles so basically it generates the particles based on those locations and then we're setting our custom particles here <laughs> And the other thing that we're doing is we're working with the structure so I'll cover that now and what I've basically done is I've maxed this out to spawn now obviously you have to create a structure for your block which I have done if we go to structures and then you can see that I've basically just saved that one particular block as a structure and then I've gone into the created a structure set the structure that I wanted so our plant and then I've set the maximum number for the po probability for a chunk so it's supposed to spawn um, one per one million chunks so basically this is basically going to spawn technically one block per one chunk so that's probably partly why it's so rare however I did try using the minimum group and maximum group and it doesn't seem like it will do a whole lot even with it maxed out to 16 so I'm not sure exactly why it's not doing any like group stuff around the area but it didn't seem to work when I was testing it the other thing that I'm doing is I'm render randomizing the structure location generally you don't need to do that but uh, I just left it default and the blocks that I'm ignoring is just the structure block that's pretty much fine however you want to set it up I usually leave it on that to begin with the uh, type of reference ground direction I've set to the first block now this is important to have for the actual testing I'm not sure if first block of motion would make any difference but uh, I've set it to the first block and it seems to generate that way and the other spawn location I've set is the ground uh, location so there's different 
types of um, particular spawning locations. There's ground, which is the default value, air, and then there's also underground. You want underground. And then the spawn uh, X, spawn the height, and the Z offset. Uh, I've basically set the height offset to negative one so it spawns underneath the block. Now another thing that it could be is what's happening is it's still testing for all the blocks under the particular in that particular chunk. Now that would explain why it's not targeting just caves. I've tried spawning it from air and it didn't work that well compared to spawning it from a block. So I'm not sure if there's any particular workaround for that. If someone does find a workaround, let me know in the comments and I might be able to see it. The other thing that I've basically done is set the spawn world type. So you can set up the spawn world type that you want. And I have set the restrict block types to these blocks here, which is dirt, andersite, granite, diorite, and stone. So all these blocks it can generate on and or pretty much generate beneath. And then what we're doing is we're going to run this condition, additional condition for the block itself. So with this block, what I'm doing is I'm basically just testing if the block current block location is air. And if that's true, then what I'm going to do is return true. And if not, then it's, I'm going to return false, which is going to only spawn if the block current block is air. Now, oddly enough, that works. I'm not sure why. It seems to test uh, the, the offset location of this particular thing and ignores the block itself, which is a really weird way to have it set up, but it works that way, so I'm not sure why it happens. Oddly enough, it works, so I just kind of ran with it. I've tried other methods of doing the block below and stuff like that, and it didn't work as efficiently, I don't think. Or uh, I tried a lot of stuff to get it spawning, but in the end, just having it generate um, 30 times, which is kind of a lot, but um, it seemed to get the plants to actually generate. So I will make sure to include the workspace, the textures, and the procedures as well in the on a GitHub repository, so you guys can download it in the description from the description it will go to the page and then you can click on the little uh, zip file icon and then it will download it to your computer you'll be able to get the workspace and all the files from this project from that so if you enjoyed the channel uh, or the video definitely consider subscribing if you're not already and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out